I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. The voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Okay, guys, it is Friday morning. This is the day after I potted up my clone tomato branches into the cow pots that are made out of aged cow manure, and it doesn't smell. And I want to show you how I have this 90% shade cloth clipped to a patio chair. And... I'm going to let it get a little sun throughout the day, and I'll just clip it right here. You see, I have a clip over there, a clip right here, and then one right here that I'm going to clip here when I need it. I'll be home all day, so I'm just going to give it little few minutes intervals of sun. Okay, here, a few days ago, I pulled all of the patty pan squash. It did really, really well. I sprinkled a few dwarf okra seeds. I was blessed to receive in the mail. Somebody heard me asking somebody for some dwarf okra seeds uh, in my live chat and they sent them to me. And then right over here, I put butter crunch lettuce. This is another gift here. I'm gonna pot it up. Actually, it's gonna go into this pot, that cherimoya tree that I received. And here is the pecan tree that I found growing and turmeric along here. Let me move that out the way. A little society garlic. And then we have, like I said, the butter, butter crunch lettuce and uh, a marigold. And I'm gonna take a few of these marigolds seed pots or spent flowers and I'm going to sp sprinkle some of them to grow around the okra to try to keep um, some of the aphids away. Aphids love to attack okra and then you'll get ants eating the aphid excretion. Okay, so now let me show you the beautiful bed. This is an elevated raised bed and here's another one and you can see I have overgrown basil and I've been pinching it off trying to uh, stop it from going to seed that looked like it was a lace wing it was it was a lace wing and you guys know something I didn't know that lace wings were beneficial insects until about hmm, maybe five years ago so I'm, I'm constantly learning and, and I'm just sharing that with you. Okay, so here in the second bed, I've got basil and I have English and another type of uh, lavender and it's flowering and just shaking it guys or just moving it. It smells wonderful, especially with the, the basil. So I haven't seen any insects over here and I have a little society garlic on the edge and all of this everything in here wow actually over there too everything was grown from seeds except the, the turmeric because that was a rhizome and the uh, volunteer uh, let me go closer the volunteer pecan tree so let me move on over to this bed this is the butternut squash. It's only been a couple of weeks, guys, that I sow these seeds. And it's growing really well. And I come out every day and I try to move 
the vines up the trellis that I made with three tomato cages. And you can see I have the beginning of butternut squash. And there's another one here. It's about four of them, I think, so far. And uh, I know it'll be putting on more. And it looks really good. It's really healthy. Um, yeah. And then I have marigolds that I planted in here or transplanted so that, you know, it'll get some protection. And it's some basil in there, too. I'm waiting for it to grow. Okay. So some of the vines, I'm going to let them grow down. And I'm going to hoist them up, like, right here. I'm going to hoist them up with a sling, kind of like I, the way I'm doing my uh, watermelon uh, in the side garden. And I'll show you that soon. So now, let's look over here. We've got one, two, three, four pots of ginger. Okay? They're doing really well. Now, this right here, I'm telling you guys. So I've been telling you over and over that I've been gardening for over 40 years. I've never seen anything like what I'm getting ready to show you. This is the pomegranate cutting, and I'm going to tie it right here. I put the stick here so I can secure this with a little twine. I got to go in the house and get it. This is the cutting that I got from Juicing with Jay. Look right here. Can you believe this little sapling, unrooted cutting that I'm rooting, turning into a sapling, which will turn into a tree, has four pieces of fruit on it. Can you believe that? I've never seen anything like that. Actually, here's another one. Let me see if I can focus in with the top of my finger. Right there. Five pieces of fruit. It's trying to grow. Now, you and I know that this tree is not a tree yet. It's a sapling, and it is too small to handle this fruit. And I know it's not going to mature, but I'm going to hang on for it a little while longer before I to see what it's going to do. And then I will remove it. Let me kind of like put that like that. Okay. Yeah. Fruit on a rooted cutting. And remember, he sent me these cuttings, um, two of them, I think it was two, unrooted, and I rooted them first, I believe, in water, then I put them in this soil, then I put them in a bigger pot. It's a nice size pot, it can stay in this pot all uh, summer and winter. But uh, I'm just, I'll let you all know, I just wanna get a picture of when that fruit opens, that flower, okay? Which will be the end of the fruit. That, that is really, really cool. I mean, I thought I'd been surprised by a lot of things, but this one got me. The only other thing that I knew that happened like this to me was a um, fig unrooted cutting. It produced figs in four months. Okay, here's my elderberry cutting. I have several of them. I've been giving them away. I have two more left, a little bitty one there. And this one right here is really big. And I'll probably end up uh, selling this one because, let me just pan over here and go in closer. Well, you see the elderberries have taken over the jujube tree by the branches extending over. And then right there on the ground, they are popping up on the other side of the jujube tree. So I really don't need any more elderberry cuttings. Okay, I'm going to walk over there and give you an idea of how, of how many uh, flowers that are on the, on the one elderberry bush. And all of those white flowers will turn into berries. In fact, I'll get closer and show it to you. Okay, so this is what the flowers look like. Then they get pollinated and they fall off fall off and they they uh turn into these little bitty white balls which are going to turn into little green balls which will turn into and i'll insert a picture of the actual berries and you can see they're being pollinated right now let me go closer uh, as soon as i started talking the bee went away 
but <laughs> it's just phenomenal. I'm just so thankful and so proud that I'm gonna have the opportunity if the Lord says the same to harvest all of these berries, extract the juice, and preserve it. I'm on the outside of my privacy fence. I want to just show you that I have elderberries uh, peering through the uh, muscadines that are cascading over the fence. And I'll show you the muscadines in another video, but I just want you to see that they are filling out and making grapes noble muscadines okay here are my okra plants and i'm harvesting a little okra i'm doing it now i could let it wait but I, if i forget then it'll get too big and too hard so the recipe that i made the other day i made some um a stew a fish stew with okra patty pan squash, garlic, and crushed red peppers, and something else. But anyway, I plant my okra early. I plant more than um, necessary for those 17 gallon buckets. This one, I guess, is closer to most of the, the windbreak from the uh, muscadines as well as the trees, and it did very well. So I'm just letting it stay in here. You can see it's blooming. And I just come out every day and harvest the okra. I've got three containers of the eggplant. They went out earlier than you don't, you know, they say you should do it, but it's okay because they're doing well and you can see fruit and it's my favorite eggplant black beauty and by the way that okra is clemson spineless okra it's the same seeds that i sent to you guys that are in my uh group so we have a lot of flowers on these uh eggplant here's another one see it and once it gets to about that size guys it's a, it's a matter of a, a week or so and it'll be huge Hey, right over here, I harvested all the beans. They did okay. I got a few um, um, nice harvest. I will insert a picture. But they didn't do as well as they should because when we got that real hot heat wave, I'm sorry, it's the garbage truck. Um, it kind of fried the plants a little bit and slowed down production. And since I have some more... Um, beans hanging in a basket or several baskets i decided to go ahead on and pull these because i need a space to put some greens in for my juice in and i decided to grow swiss shard because it does well uh in this summer heat and you see these hoops here on these three grow boxes, I will be able to put an insect netting. So what I'm gonna put here is something that won't um, need to be pollinated. And that is, I'm gonna do some marigolds, old seeds that I saved, as well as um, the rainbow Swiss shard. Now, you know, the Swiss yard seeds come in little balls like this, and it could be five or six little seedlings that can spring forth from this little bitty ball. Okay, so I'm going to drop marigold seeds all around the perimeter of these three boxes, and then I'm going to put not too many Swiss yard you see how I'm spacing them one, five inches apart because I don't want them to be too crowded and I'm not covering them up.
more over here. Six, because I have more. Seven, eight, nine, and it'll get some shade from this Sarsara Magnolia tree. Here is a small gorilla cart like this one here, but I've got tomatoes growing in. I had a lot of basil in this one in deal, and it all uh, bolted in the uh, heat wave. So I dehydrated most of the herbs in here. And because I have more herbs growing here and over there that's going to seed in that huge gorilla cart, I was watching Dan's Permaculture Food Forest and he has a store on Etsy. And because I save so much money, and I don't have to justify anything to anybody, but <laughs> I just like to remind you that I grew everything in these garden beds from seeds. And I decided I would treat myself because I saw his Cajun Gungo pigeon peas. And so I went on his Etsy store and I purchased them. And I advise all of you all to go because this is a uh, perennial crop and I'm going to grow them this first season here in these rows that I've made with a stick down here. And then I'm going to pick these up and plant them in the wood chips. Okay guys, you can see here that I put the peas in the rows and I have some left I'm going to find some other areas to put them in because I want these to be a good crop uh, that the birds can eat now Dan said you can make them in soups and stews and that type of thing um, but I think I'm gonna put some on the outskirts of my food for so that the birds need to eat. They can eat some of those peas too. Now, as long as they don't get disrespectful and eat too many, we won't have a problem. <laughs> and take extra soil and cover them up. Pressing down as I go. Hear the birds? They talking to each other. They're saying she's planting more seeds. <laughs> okay, this is good. I'm gonna water them the same way. I'll get some water from my rain barrel and I'll water these in real good. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me show you my mammoth sunflower. I'm gonna get closer to it just so that you can see how beautiful it is. All of them are doing very, very well. I would appreciate if you would share this video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.